Today we're going to check out the all new Windows Terminal and I'm also going to show you how to customize it. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseCetro.com. So today we're going to be taking a look at the new Windows 10 Terminal and it's very much in a preview mode. It's not 100% finished. There's some issues with it, but I really wanted to take a look at how to actually customize it through their profiles and their color schemes. So if I switch over here to the desktop, we'll see what we have here. I have uh, just something in the background just so you can see the sort of uh, acrylic opaque effect that they uh, have here. So I, uh, aside from just using custom background images, you can also have this option as well. And you can control to what degree this effect uh, starts taking place. Uh, so you can really make it minimized or you can make it really stand out much more. So we're going to be taking a look about you know how to create your custom profiles, color schemes, and all of that good stuff. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is install it. So hit the Windows key plus Q. That'll bring up this option um, and we'll type in Microsoft Store. Just type in Microsoft Enter. Um, we'll search for Windows Terminal and we'll get this right here and as you can see i already have mine installed uh, but there are a couple of system requirements uh, you want to make sure that you have for the os right here windows 10 version 18362 or higher so i didn't have that um and so i tried installing it without even knowing that and so it, it won't let you wor it work without that of course so once you get it installed and all ready to rock let's hit launch here um alternatively you can also hit windows key and q and just type in terminal and you'll see it there you can access it this way as well um and so by default, it's going to give you the PowerShell, which looks quite familiar uh, if you've used uh, anything outside of the previous uh, Windows 10 terminal that they've released. Uh, the way we get to the standard console is to hit this uh, drop down right here and choose Command. And then you'll see something that looks pretty familiar. However, the moment that you bring up a window, uh, actually, I'll do this. We'll get some feedback here. That's okay and we put it on top, you'll see it has this sort of interesting opaque, uh, pretty cool sort of background element that's going on there. So um, the way we can, well, first of all, let me just note one thing that was very frustrating to me uh, that I noticed. I, if you wanna take the window and you know, move it around, you can't click anywhere to the left of this plus sign. Like I'm, li I'm left clicking and dragging and it won't let me move it. So I, I assume that's something that they're gonna fix. You only have this small area right here to actually move things around. That was the first annoying thing that I noticed, but nah, all in all, not a big deal. Um, so what we'll do now is the way we can make uh, changes to this is we can click this drop down arrow and we click on settings. Now what this does is it brings up this option or this section right here. So I'm using right here, this is the code editor is uh, Visual Studio Code, which is a free code editor from Microsoft as well. Um, and this is a JSON file. And this is where you control your settings. Let me make this a little bit larger here. So over here we have shortcuts or key bindings. So these are all just basic uh, objects here. Uh, and then right here we have profiles and also down here we have color schemes and it ships with like, I think five by default. Each color scheme has its own name. So that's buried right here within the different colors. Uh, so this is Campbell, this is one half dark, etc. Now up here, we see we also have these profiles and one thing that's important to note, for instance, this name is Windows PowerShell. This name right here is command. So those two things are in reference to these two options that are showing up right here. So that's where it's getting the name from uh, are those two profiles that have been set up. So each profile also has an associated color scheme. So for instance, one half dark. So you'll find one half dark down here. Uh, and the other one is, let's see, your color scheme is Campbell. All right, so you'll you'll find Campbell right there as well, um, and also the default 
profile that loads is denoted by this ID right here. So what it means by default is once it loads up, you know, which one is, which profile is it using by default? Uh, so if we come back here, we'll see that this one ends in 44BF. You'll also find that right here, 44BF. Uh, so it has a, a, a graphic user ID. So you can make changes to these, uh, and when you make the changes, they will reflect automatically uh, in this window right here. So let's go ahead and try to do that. All right, so first of all, how would you change the color scheme that's associated with your given profile that's currently selected? So I we can see the command line is cmd.exe, um, and this is the one that we're currently using. The color scheme is one half dark right here. Okay, so if we wanted to change that and experiment with a different one, uh, there's one half dark, by the way. Let's see, let's try one half light. So we simply just take the name and we put it in right here. We'll hit save and there we go. Automatically it updates. And so it's just basically a light version. Let's try one more. We'll try solar light, solarized light, if I can talk. All right, so let's go here, paste it. Yeah, not much has changed. So anyhow, the, of course, you could go ahead and modify these values as you want. You could create your own, giving it your own name as well. Uh, all you would do is just copy this section and then just paste it right in uh, and make your adjustments to each of these colors as you wish. We're not gonna go through that. There's a lot of colors here, but you can experiment with that. Um, let's, let's talk about uh, creating our own profile. So what we'll do is create a profile and then we will also make it the default profile that loads up every time we launch a new instance of Windows Terminal. Terminal. So let's just take this bottom one right here so we're copying it from this bracket right here down to the closing. We'll put a comma. All right. And next, we'll leave this all here. That's fine. Actually, no, I want to change this to Campbell. There we go. Um, we're going to give it a name. We'll just call this. I'm just going to call this design course. You can name it whatever you want. And then also the ID. I'm just going to change this end number to two to make it unique. And we will go ahead and also make that change up here to the default profile. Oh, it's using the other one. Let's copy this whole thing instead. There we go. So we'll paste this in and save it. So now select inside of here and hit Control T. Uh, we'll see right now, oh, if we drop this down, by the way, we'll see design course now is automatically selected because it's in bold. All right, because now that is the default profile. All right, so now let's talk about you know, how we can make adjustments to this. This, this appearance looks horrible to me. It's, it's smashed up against the ed edge. There's no white space. And as a, a UI designer, you know I love uh, white space. So let's see what we can do with this. So we're going to come down here to our custom profile, and we'll make some changes. So first, we'll just go down these in order. I'm not going to uh, cover every single one of them, but just the most important ones. So we have acrylic opacity. All right, and it's set at 75%. So what happens, let's see what that looks like now. And this is in reference, by the way, to this sort of uh, transparent, uh, blurred out background. If we push this all the way up to one and hit save, you can barely see it now. All right, now, otherwise, if we put say 0 .00, uh, 0 0.01 and we save, you can really see the background. And this could be kind of difficult if you're going on white on white, for instance. Uh, so somewhere in the middle, if you want that option, uh, is worth it. And of course, you can turn the whole thing off, which I wish they would have specif you know, specified use acrylic right underneath acrylic, uh, but no big deal. If we hit false, it's not even gonna have that at all. So it'll just have your solid color uh, based on the color scheme that you've chosen. All right, so um, we'll just re-enable that temporarily, go back to 75% and there we go. Um, 
we have a couple other things. You know what color scheme is. I you can change the cursor color. So FFCC00. This wasn't the default. I changed this before, but the cursor you can see is yellow right there, and that's what that color code is. Uh, you can change the cursor shape. I'm not sure what the other available options are. You can find that in the GitHub, which I've linked in the YouTube. You can change the font face as well. So we can do something hideous like Times New Roman and hit uh, Control in your mouse scroll wheel. You make that bigger. That is horrendous. Don't ever do that. We'll go back to Consolus. Uh, font size. I definitely want to increase that. We'll try 14. There we go. Uh, we can also change, uh, you have access to changing the icon and PNG format, uh, the name, you know what that is, padding. Okay, let's try 25, 25. So this is from the top right, bottom left. I, I would assume at least if it's anything like CSS. So now we've just pushed it away. And I would assume these are probably by pixels uh, or so. All right, very nice. Um, and then Starting directory, I also changed this as well. By default, you'll probably see it's just that user profile, in which case it would be uh, C, uh, prompt, users, and then your username. I, I always just wanted to load up in my code folder because I'm usually working in there. And that's how you choose that. Choose that, And then you know what use acrylic is. Um, so how would you, for instance, make this so that you have a custom background? All right, so in order to use a custom background option, you have to disable use acrylic. So that's the first step, and we'll choose false. All right, so now it's just gonna be a solid color. And so now we can introduce a couple other properties that don't exist in here that we can now define. I've already created a sort of background that I wanna use. So we put in background Im image, in camo case there with a capital I, and we'll put in the location of the image. So users, DreamMake, documents, that's where I stored it, bg.jpg. We also need to, uh, we can put in a background image opacity. We'll put one. And then also background image stretch mode. Uniform to fill is probably the one that you're gonna want to use. Um, so if we save this, you can see we now have this sort of interesting graphic that I created with my logo uh, in the center. I didn't want to create anything that was too insane uh, because if you have high contrasting areas with a bunch of colors, it's just going to make your code, or not your code, but the output here that much harder to read. So I made it something very simple. Um, of course, if you could change this down to like 0 0.2, you'll see we'll probably hardly even see it at all. Yeah, uh, so just leaving it at one for me and my particular image will work quite well. All right.